Hello, this is Skook Jones at Climate Interactive. This video will show you how to represent changes to the food system in En-ROADS. A correction. En-ROADS has been updated since I first did these estimates. You should use minus 1.5% per year when you enter the deforestation slider. The techniques are the same, although it might look slightly different. The other materials have been updated and captions in this video will remind you of the correct values. These settings are based on reports from the Food and Agriculture Organization, especially the report Tackling Climate Change with Livestock, as well as our own analysis of the data. For example, here is a graph of emissions from various stages in the food system since 1990. There are three sources of emissions in the food system that we can simulate in En-ROADS. First, there are direct emissions, that is, methane and nitrous oxide from animals and manure fertilizer, and rice production. Second, there are energy and infrastructure emissions. This is CO2 from farm machinery, transport, processing, etc. Third, there are emissions from land use changes, mostly deforestation, that occur as farmlands expand. The report, Tackling Climate Change with Livestock, found that the most efficient livestock systems had emissions that were one-third lower than average. We will use this as a basis for some of our actions in En-ROADS. Here in En-ROADS, we represent these types of emissions using three of the sliders, the Agriculture and Waste Emission Slider, the Transport Energy Efficiency Slider, and the Deforestation Slider. At the top of the En-ROADS display are two graphs. On the left is Greenhouse Gas Net Emissions by Gas. Each color area is a type of gas and its source. The agriculture direct emissions are part of the top two areas, pink nitrous oxide and blue methane. Energy and infrastructure emissions in the food system are a small part of the large gray energy CO2 in the middle of the graph. And the land use emissions are in the green area at the bottom. The right graph has the sum of all these sources of emissions. And to the right of that, we see the resulting temperature change compared to in pre-industrial times. Here we have the base scenario where taking no actions by 2100, we will have 4.1 degrees Celsius of temperature change. Our goal is to bring temperature change by 2100 down below two degrees and as close as possible to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Starting with the direct emissions, which are underneath the methane and other menu, first make sure that the use detailed settings switch is set to yes. If there was a change in global diets to be more plant-based, or if we adopted more efficient livestock systems worldwide, the impact would be minus 10% on the agriculture and waste emissions slider. This is the same impact in En-ROADS as the one-third of agriculture emissions that was identified in Tackling Climate Change with Livestock. Watch what happens when I enter minus 10%. The graph to the right shows non-CO2 greenhouse gas emissions, and you'll see the blue line change when I hit enter. The non-CO2 greenhouse gas emissions are lower because there are lower emissions from livestock and also lower emissions from the croplands used to grow feed for livestock. As I replay this change, look at the upper two graphs to see how it changes from business as usual. On the left graph, you'll see that the pink nitrous oxide and blue methane become smaller, and therefore the greenhouse gas net emissions are lower and the temperature change by 2100 is lower. This one change in the food system brought us to 4.0 degrees Celsius by 2100. The second impact of a more efficient, more plant-based food system would be lower emissions from energy and infrastructure. We simulate this with the transport energy efficiency slider. The change is fairly small, so you might want to show a different graph on the left. A good one is the oil primary energy demand by area, 
because most of the energy emissions in the food system are from oil for non-electric use. What would be happening in the real world would be less transport of animal feed, less use of refrigeration, less use of farm machinery. But in the current version of En-ROADS, the closest we can come to simulating this is to alter energy efficiency. The reduction of one third of energy emissions associated with livestock is equivalent to adding an additional half a percent per year in transport energy efficiency change. So this slider will go to 1% per year. And when I hit enter, you'll see the dark area, oil for non-electric use, decrease. And therefore, if I replay it, on the right, the greenhouse gas net emissions are lower and the temperature change by 2100 is lower. I'm going to switch back to the greenhouse gas net emissions by gas graph to look at deforestation. The land saved from having a more efficient or lower use of livestock is equivalent to the emissions of entering minus 5% in the deforestation slider. When I enter minus 5%, you'll see on the right net land use and forestry emissions become lower. And on the upper left, the green area will actually include some negative land use CO2. And therefore, there will be lower greenhouse gas net emissions seen on the right. Okay. To replay that change, we have lower emissions from land use and forestry some negative emissions in land use CO2, and therefore lower greenhouse gas net emissions and a slightly lower temperature change by 2100. So the net result of a change to either more efficient livestock or lower demand for animal products is 0.3 degrees. This table summarizes the slider positions that simulate a change in diets or efficiency. Minus 10% on the egg and waste emissions slider, an additional half a percent per year on the transport energy efficiency slider, and minus 5% per year on deforestation. We can also show what would happen with a more extensive change in diet. For example, the so-called Lancet diet recommends much lower meat consumption, less dairy, more whole grains and legumes. With this larger change in diet, we expect that we could reduce livestock emissions even further. We'd expect the same amount of change in energy and infrastructure and in deforestation as the smaller change in diet, but a larger change in agriculture and waste emissions as livestock is replaced by more plant-based foods. In En-ROADS, we would represent that by having the same sliders in energy efficiency and transport and in deforestation, but the methane and other slider for agriculture and waste emissions would be minus 20% instead of minus 10%. When we enter minus 20%, you will see the non-CO2 greenhouse gas emissions fall even further. And at the upper left, the blue methane and pink nitrous oxide emissions will be even smaller. We'll have lower greenhouse gas net emissions and a lower temperature change. You can see all three of those changes. Lower non-CO2 greenhouse gas leads to lower methane and nitrous oxide, lower greenhouse gas net emissions, and therefore a lower temperature change. So far we have looked at livestock emissions, but there is also room to improve crop systems. If we use the same assumptions that the most efficient crop systems are one-third lower emissions than the average cropping systems, then the appropriate reductions in En-ROADS would be a further 
minus 5% in agricultural waste emissions, another 0.7% in the transport energy efficiency slider, and another 5% reduction in deforestation. The effect on emissions from improving the crop system will be similar to what we saw when improving the livestock system. I'll go through and enter each element and watch how each graph changes. First, a further 5% reduction in agriculture and waste emissions causes lower methane and nitrous oxide emissions. A further 0.7% per year in transport energy efficiency improvement will lead to a smaller energy CO2 emissions and a further 5% per year in deforestation will lead to deforestation becoming lower more quickly and therefore land use CO2 becoming negative sooner. This table summarizes the slider position on each of the three sliders we use in En-ROADS for each of the three conditions, a more plant-based diet, a mostly vegetarian diet, and more efficient crop systems that you could do by itself or add to either of the diet changes. Looking back to En-ROADS, you can see that the overall impact of making these changes in the food system is to reduce temperature change to 3.7 degrees by 2100. This is an important contribution, but like many of the interactions we look at, it is not by itself a silver bullet. It is part of silver buckshot. I want to talk about other effects you might bring up when facilitating an En-ROADS conversation. The first is about afforestation. We don't assume that reducing pressure on agricultural land automatically causes forest to regrow, but in your discussion, you could bring up that a more efficient food system that uses less land to feed people would make it easier for there to be more afforestation. The others have to do with multi-solving justice and co-benefits. Some changes in diet and agriculture, such as more plant-based foods, more diverse crops, or fewer chemicals, would also have benefits to people's health. Next, many of the practices that cause a more efficient livestock system would mean higher yield and lower loss of livestock, which, if implemented fairly, should be a benefit to the hundreds of millions of people who depend on livestock for part of their livelihoods. But you also have to consider, if we are transforming diets, those same people who depend on livestock for their livelihoods lose some market. Change should be designed so that the most vulnerable people do not suffer, for example, by getting paid more for lower amounts but higher quality animal products to meet the needs of a population with different diets. To review, a table with these slider settings will be with the facilitation materials at enroads.org. When facilitating enroads, be sure to note that changes to the food system can be part of the climate solution, not the whole solution, and have important additional benefits. Good luck with your use of En-ROADS and sign up at enroads.org.